for years and years there have been, as part of our civilization, special purpose electromechanical computers. And classic example of these is vending machines. If you put in the right combination of money, they will vend you a bar of chewing gum or whatever. And they've been around for so long that they really are largely mechanical. They're a bit more sophisticated now because they've got microchips inside them, but they don't really need that. We're going to look at the fundamentals of vending machines, or if you like, very similar, how do I pay my car park charge and get a ticket that I put on my windshield and to say, yes, I have paid. What's the process of saying, you must pay me 25p if you're in the UK, in the States, you must pay me 25 cents. And I've got real live UK coins here. This is one of the simplest finite state automaton examples I know of, because I think you'll all find it familiar. Here in the UK, if we're told we have to pay 25p, typically you would have to choose from a 5 pence coin, a 10 pence coin, a 20 pence coin. Unlike the USA, we do not have a 25 pence coin. You cannot just, as it were, put one coin in and that's 25 and you're done. You've got to build it up out of any possible combination of these. And if you look at this diagram with me, it's, it's so simple. It's just self-explanatory. You start over here, the machine has got no money in it. You put in one of these 5p coins and it goes chunk and it moves into what I shall call the five state. It basically is saying to itself, I'm happy, I've got 5p so far, but it's not enough yet. Well, all right, let's be controversial. Let's make our second coin be a 10p coin. Now we take this transition out of the five state, we've put in a 10 coin, and it jet propels us into the 15 state. So the machine, if only it had a brain, is effectively smiling and saying, I'm on the way, I've got 15p, but the aim is 25. Well, there's two ways to get from 15 to 25, look. You either put two more fives in, that gets you there, or one 10. And when you get to 25, I'll put it inside a double circle, which is the convention, because that's the finished state. You've put in 25p, and eventually goes bzz, 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 and prints you out a ticket. And because you pay 25p, it entitles you to two hours parking or whatever. All that this is doing is encoding in this diagram all the possible ways that you can build up 25p. And if you think about it in a weird way, it's kind of like a language. And the sentences in the language are possible ways to make up 25p. So here's a legal sentence. This is the other way to think about it. A legal sentence in this language is 55555. Five, 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 five. Another legal sentence, just using the words 20 and 10 and 5, is 25. That's a legal sentence, makes up 25p. How about 10105? 10, 10, ah, but then it could be in any combination. There's 10105, 51010, 10510. 55510 five, five, works. So you can go through this if you want to work out all of the many, many combinations that will you get 25p. It leaves you, of course, with uh, situations like what happens if you overpay? You've only got three of these 10p coins, 30p. Many say, if you overpay, I don't mind, it's more profit for me and you know, I'll give you the ticket anyway. Some badly designed ones just seize up and sulk. But then if they seize up and sulk, the question is, in the end, is there a sort of reject button you can press which says, I've given you too much and now give it all back to me? Or does it just gobble it up and say, I'm sorry, it's an illegal amount, it's too much and I won't print you a ticket. And this gets people really, really annoyed when this happens. But you all know the symptoms of exactly this sort of thing. And like I'm saying, these are so commonplace. They've been with us for ages. But the crucial thing I want to emphasize is the following. If you're sitting there in the 15 state, all that this machine says or knows inside itself, if you like, is I am in the 15 state. If you say to it, but how did you get there? It would say, I don't know. I just don't know. I retain no memory of the coins I've had to get me to this state at all. I just know I'm in 15. It could have been 10 and 5. It could have been 555. Five, five. 
Who cares? I'm in a 15 state. So that is why these are machines with no need for memory. They're, if you like, a processing system that accepts coins. And you could perhaps argue that it's the ultimate special purpose computer. It's a special purpose dumb computer that vends tickets for a parking lot. Only thing it does need is when you put in a coin, every single coin, it needs a holding position. You could think of this as being like a sort of register inside a central process unit. It holds the current coin and often will examine it. And of course, in the early days, all it could do to check it was valid was maybe weigh it. Nowadays, you can shine lasers at them, do spectroscopic analysis and all sorts to determine. So the current coin is held in, I always think of it as a sort of register to hold it until it's decided to accept it. And when it's accepted, it drops into a pot of all the coins you've given so far. And maybe we win the 15 state, we get another five, we go into 20. But that latest five just goes chunk and you hear it drop inside and it's in the pot. But the pot is amorphous. The pot has no knowledge of how those coins got in there and in what order. It doesn't need to know that. We've talked about vending machines, we've talked about parking machines. Is, is there anything that they get used for in computer science maybe that's more of a kind of technical or cult? Yes. Yes, vending machines, parking machines, the simplest thing. And what you're asking is, What's the thing that really turns on computer scientists that's that simple? I'll tell you, Sean, what's that simple? It's the rules for what is a valid variable name in a language. Now, if you've done any programming, you will know that the rule typically is a variable name, an identifier, as they're sometimes called, can be any combination of letters or digits in any order, but it must start with a letter. Yeah, so you can have Sean, Dave, they'll be variables. You can say they're integers or whatever. You can even have K9 as a thing, but you can't have 9K, yeah? Because anything beginning with a digit could be the start of a number. And what languages do not want to spend ages deciding whether 9999 really is meant to be a number or in some way, weird way you're trying to name a variable. Oh no, if it starts with a digit, it's going to be a number, isn't it? If it starts with a letter, it's an identifier or a variable name. And you can see with that, you could draw one of these diagrams. You could say, come in, is it a letter? Fine. Next date. Is it a letter? Fine. Go back recursively into yourself and expect more letters. Or is it a number? Loop back recursively into yourself again. You've got a, a self, -a, a, a loop coming out back in again with letter on the top of it and the loop at the bottom saying digit on the bottom of it. And you can keep going round and round, taking any combinations of letters or digits until typically what happens is you come to a sort of end symbol. And in a program, what will happen, of course, is you'll have a semicolon. Int Sean, semicolon. That says that's the end of the identifier. Or sometimes it'll be a comma if you're declaring lots of things. But there's always some end symbol that tells you end of identifier. And you say, is that legal? You don't need any, anything fancy to recognise that that's a legal identifier. You don't need stacks, you don't need tons of RAM. It's just one of these things. For example, here's the table, here's the floor. Well, which bits of the floor and which bits of this table can I see? So you have to do a lot of matrix solving. To